We're back. Welcome, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly, and this is the Cube Silicon Angles Wikibon's coverage of explorations in cyber international relations. This is the fourth ECIR workshop. Uh, the, the conference today is really focused on cybersecurity and the governance gap. It's really the governance piece that really is getting a lot of attention. And it's our pleasure to have Nasli Shukri, who is the organizer of the conference, as well as the uh, professor of political science at MIT and author, and very much pleased to have you here. Welcome to theCUBE. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Um, the weather is okay, but it's very sunny and very beautiful. Th th this project is actually a, a collaboration with Harvard, and uh, it's the first large-scale collaboration we've had on, on this kind of subject. Uh, and bringing the two cultures together was very interesting and, and very fruitful to do. Well, I'd love so. to see that. I mean, everybody thinks Harvard and MIT are somewhat competitive, but, uh, <laughs> but you're collaborating. So no, it's MIT and Harvard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. I just go alphabetical. I'm sorry. So uh, tell, us, uh, tell us about this, uh, this event. This is the fourth, uh, this is the fourth. conference, right? Yeah. So t tell us how it started and, and where it's come from. Well, it started uh, by uh, us um, uh, proposing a project, research project, responding to a, a request uh, from the Department of Defense Minerva program, um, which at the time was intended to help uh, boost the uh, social sciences. And uh, the proposal that, we, that uh, we, we presented and was funded was for a five years analysis of the relationship between cyberspace and international relations. And when we began, it looked as if these were parallel tracks. Uh, the cyber world, internet world, and the world of uh, geopolitics, power politics, the world we know something about. Uh, and our job was to find ways of, of integrating both. Now what's very interesting is that the world out there integrated itself much faster than uh, we have been able to develop the tools that would do the integration. Um, so in a sense, th there's a mutual development of the ideas and, and of the realities, and the speed with which this has happened has been amazing. Yeah, so we have the, actually the, uh, the Bible that we were using <laughs> to prepare for yeah. this event. Uh, Nasli's <laughs> book on cyber politics and international relations, mm -hmm. dog-eared, highlighted uh, the works, but essentially the, the premise of the book is, as you just described, is mm -hmm. the pace of, of cyberspace and the permeation of cyberspace throughout uh, you know, society right. and, and commerce has grown much, much faster than our ability to keep up from an international geopolitical standpoint. And that's created a dissonance. Um, and, and I guess the events mm -hmm. like this are, are, are attempts to try to close that gap, right? The policy side of this event is an attempt to understand how best to close that gap. And, and as you saw this morning, there were different points of views about yeah, which paths to go, <laughs> how to do it, etc. The other side of this is that um, the, 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 the cyber domain, the internet, the physical, uh, uh, mechanisms um, are, ca are, 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 are multiplying, are, are, are developing, users are expanding, uh, and it's very difficult to remember a world before the internet. And remember that the internet is just the core of the cyber domain. I mean, I'd like to think of cyberspace as an arena where we interact, uh, but the mechanism through which we do this is, in first order, uh, the internet. You had a nice chart uh, th this morning. You showed the, the traditional, the state, and then you had uh, cyberspace, and you had the environment, and sort of three right. independent vectors, but right. you made the point that these are very much interrelated. Um, yeah. And you also brought to our attention the threats of under things like undersea cables, which yeah. uh, you, I was surprised at how many hands went up when you asked how many people think about mm -hmm. the threats to undersea cables. My hand did not go up, but uh, did well, that surprise you? How many? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I, it surprised me, but I was stunned when I discovered, as part of our research, uh, the, 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 the um, undersea cable networks, uh, and one of the speakers today will be talking about this. Um, and few of us really in the policy world or in the political science world or in the uh, social science world think about undersea cables. And, and most normal people out there probably don't worry about <laughs> undersea cables. I don't intend to worry, but I do intend to uh, point to the, those aspects of the internet and the cyber world uh, that may not be new to that world, but, it's, but are certainly new to the, to the rest of us, the users. Yeah, I think it's important to remember this cyberspace, there is a physical infrastructure that supports it, of course. Um, 
Now, Zay, I'd like to ask you a little bit about uh, some of the new threats that are emerging in cyberspace. And maybe you can compare it a little bit to some of the, the more traditional, um, I guess, playing uh, fields, if you will, will, of international relations, and how cyberspace kind of differs, and yes. what are some of those new threats? You mentioned it really gives a lot more power to individual actors, and, and in this case, and in a lot of cases, I should say, some non-state actors. Oh, um, absolutely. Could you talk a little bit about that and how that has, is, is different from what we're used to dealing with uh, from international yes. relations and security perspective? Yeah, actually, that's, that's, it's very important because the, we live in a world of nation states. Uh, we've always lived in a world where your identity, my identity are tied to a nation state. I don't exist as an individual outside my, my citizenship. Um, and we also lived in a world where only the state system counted. Um, now we have a technology in which, uh, which enables just about every individual, every group, state, non-state, -sta legal, non-legal, creative, non-creative, to participate and actually behave, uh, take decisions, do an action that may or may not be, um, uh, may or may not be a, a, a good thing to do. Um, so what we're faced with is, the, is, is that the state system countries um, are not able to really exert control over their citizens as much as they used to, or, or uh, they're now dealing with a set of adversaries, potential adversaries, that are not other countries. I mean, country versus country, we're all accustomed to that. But we're not accustomed to country versus group or country versus some kind of, of uh, adversary whose identity we do not know. And we're certainly not accustomed to thinking about um, dealing with somebody who is, um, who is not known, um, and we call it the attribution problem, and who is not accountable for his or her or its action. So it's muddying, it's created ambiguities that we didn't have uh, before, and it's calling us to come up with tools, techniques, ways of, of understanding and managing those, those yeah, ambiguities. More than just the physical boundaries, it's there's exactly. so many other abstract concepts. And, right. and, and we also heard this morning that the, the, the strong hand of the U.S. government um, is not sustainable. That's something that, uh, if ultimately yeah. we're going to address this issue, needs, yeah. to ch needs to change. But it can't change overnight. Well, you know, the, 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 the United States and the U.S. government is in a kind of interesting, difficult position. It is the country that constructed, innovated, created, you name it, the internet. It wouldn't have been there before. We wouldn't have had cyberspace before. So it's, it's the first mover, the prime mover, the, the first among what became many. And now the rest of the international system is, is, is saying, countries and, and other actors, no, you're just one among many. Uh, you just come down to where we are or there's not, no special privilege or special position to be given to the United States. In some way, this is a little unrealistic because um, without, without those, the initial vision, the initial funding, an enormous amount of work by the private sector, it's a private sector uh, enterprise to begin with, uh, we wouldn't be uh, where, where we are now. But uh, connecting the, the two questions, in the old days, we used to worry about, and we still do maybe, uh, nuclear threats, nuclear power, nuclear, nuclear adversaries, etc. Uh, but not, but not everybody in the world. Certainly, not two billion people had nuclear weapons, or had the capacity to to get involved in in in, in, in uh, disagreeable behavior. So it was a handful of known actors. Now it's really quite difficult, different. Yeah. Well. So, and and to, to your point that you made this morning, 44% of the internet users are are in Asia. Um, and, and one could argue that the, the deck has been stacked in favor of some of the U.S. companies like, like Google and, and others. Now, whether or not that was because of ICON and the U.S. government's role, I don't think it was largely, it was other factors, of course, that were com competitive. But, but the point uh, that it's not sustainable is, is one that not a lot of people in, certainly in our world, the, the, which is mm -hmm. the technology world, aren't mm -hmm. thinking about, aren't talking about. Uh, the implications of that are, are, are quite significant. Mm -hmm. no, I would agree. I, I think it's, uh, we were talking earlier, Dave, in our intro mm -hmm. segment about why is it unsustainable. That's, you know, that's kind of been taken as a given uh, in, in some of the keynotes this morning, but let's talk about exactly why. And, and some of the issues are around fragmentation mm -hmm. um, that you mentioned earlier. Um, others are, you know, governance by its very nature, you have to, it has to be kind of a cooperative affair to some degree. You can't necessarily govern by fiat, at least you can't for a, a long periods of time. So I'm curious, what are some of the ways to incent, do you think, uh, Nasli, the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. and U both the government, U.S. corporations, and other 
members of the U.S. cyberspace community, for lack of a better term, to actually give up some of this control and, and empower some of the rest of the country, uh, the world, excuse me, to uh, take a lead in cyber governance? Well, I, I think the rest of the world is not going to really take a lead. Um, I think the, what, what we can, the way we should think about it is that the state system is not going to go away. Governments are here to stay, countries are here to stay. Borders may change, you get more countries, less countries, etc. but the institution of the state uh, will, 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 not, uh, will not go away. And that in itself um, is, is um, part of, I guess, what the uh, uh, cyber community or the internet uh, uh, community uh, wants to, not, uh, wants not so much modify, but wants to make sure that other stakeholders, business, uh, private uh, uh, church groups, uh, school, whatever, um, can have a say and participate in, um, in, the, in the management of, of that system. So far, the governance issues have been more uh, organizational, um, more, I, I hate to use the, the, the analogy of uh, driver's license, but providing driver's license, providing uh, uh, mechanisms for, uh, for um, communication, routing, etc. cetera. Uh, but in the workshop today, we're dealing with other things having to do with security, uh, and having to do with what models of security ought to, ought to operate. Uh, and that is a raw nerve for uh, the state system and very important for the private sector as well. All right, Nazli, we're up against the clock and mm -hmm. I know you want to get back inside. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll leave you the last word. What, uh, what do you hope to, uh, uh, the outcomes of this event will be t today and what's next for you? Oh, the outcome of this, of today is, to, is going to give us, is to, give us a, a, a vision, a, a map, a mapping of where we go from here in, in the real world um, at the point where um, ICANN is rethinking um, its, its, its uh, orientation and at the point in which the, the uh, international community as a whole, state and non-state, formal and informal, are all, is all attuned to the issues, become an issue that is in, um, of the management of the internet and the security of the internet. And so uh, we're, we're, we're ending, this, this event today comes at the end of a phase in the world and we're putting in place the principles for the next steps as we move on. Uh, as, as to what I'm doing in the immediate future, completing the final reports for the Minerva uh, program that supports the, the, uh, the uh, ECIR project uh, and working with my colleagues at um, MIT and at Harvard to make that a good job. Right, okay, we'll leave Good. it there. Nazi Shukri, thanks very much for coming to the Cuban. Thank, Thank you for you. having us here, we appreciate it. Good. Okay, keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right, right back after this word. <laughs>